So let's bring you up to date on U.N. efforts. Rula Amin is back with us. She is senior communication advisor with the U.N.'s High Commissioner for Refugees, and she is in Damascus, Syria today. Welcome back, Rula. We spoke to you in the earliest hours after the quake disaster. It's a pleasure to have you back with us today. Thank you very much, Heather, and thanks for having me. Actually, I just got back from Aleppo, and the scenes we have seen there, the suffering, the pain, the what we witnessed is just immense. Well, can, uh, can I begin with that? Because I, I did want to exactly start there. It was quite striking to hear the UN Secretary General speak yesterday and say helping people of Syria is of the utmost urgency. And I was wondering what you've seen and what your teams have seen to lead you to characterize it in that way of utmost ur urgency. What is the situation on the ground now? You know, the first thing you see, of course, is the destruction, the building that had collapsed. Then you start seeing people on the streets, in the parks, sleeping in their own cars because either their homes had collapsed or their homes had been weakened by the earthquake and now unsafe and they cannot stay in it. So they choose to stay outside. It's very cold. It's freezing temperatures. Many are in collective shelters. It's makeshift shelters, actually, mosques, schools that had been turned into uh, centers where these people can have a roof on top of their heads. Two, more than 200 shelters just in Aleppo city alone. We saw thousands of people who had been become homeless and displaced. Again, we met with a lady who had been displaced many times during the past 12 years because of the crisis. She just returned back and now she lost her home and now she's homeless again. Really, it was so painful to see them and beyond the immediate needs, of course, which are huge because they need assistance in shelter. They need food, they need water, they need hygiene, they need medical aid, they need psychosocial support from the trauma that they have been through. All these are immediate needs, but we also saw that this earthquake is going to have a long-term impact on these people. It has destroyed the infrastructure, the water facilities, um, schools, hospitals, even the sources of clean water are at risk. And that's why our uh, understanding, we're trying to assess what are the priority needs, mm -hmm. how can we address it in the fast way possible and how can we mobilize resources so we are able to do so short and long term obviously that call for an international response the big development in terms of responding to those significant needs uh, the word that has just broken that Bashar al-Assad uh, in discussing with Mr. Griffiths agreed to open two more border crossing points from Turkey into northwestern Syria. So in that part of the country, to the opposition-held territory, there will be more aid getting in. Um, what will the impact of that be, do you think? Well, that's a very welcome uh, agreement and a welcome gesture. We needed to have more access to northwest Syria because, you know, there more than 4 million people were dependent on humanitarian aid even before this earthquake hit. And there was only one border crossing allowing the United Nations to bring in aid into Northwest Syria. Now we had some pre-positioned tents and relief items and they were disposed and, and I mean, they were used by the partners on the ground to assist people, but nowhere near enough because the needs are huge and more than 3 million people were displaced inside that uh, area anyway before the earthquake. Yes. So you can imagine how much needs there were. Now with these two border uh, points opening, we are hoping to be able much more, uh, much needed and desperately needed assistance to reach all those who were affected. Only 52 truckloads of aid into that region so far. So one would expect, as you say, uh, the numbers allowed in will grow considerably. It's interesting though, I'm not sure if you heard these comments, We've reported a lot on the White Helmets who have been involved in the search and rescue, the civil defense organization that's operating in the Northwest. They heard about the UN deal brokered with uh, President Assad and were most upset about it. Shocked was the word they used in speaking with the Reuters news agency. They said, we are at a loss as to how the UN is behaving in allowing Assad to dictate the terms of aid being delivered to them in the Northwest. Is that a fair criticism? And why is that situation continuing? 
Um, you know what? I rather not characterize it whether it's fair or not. It's very hard when you have your beloved ones and relatives and friends under the rubble and you don't have enough equipment to save them. It's very hard to see your families displaced and no shelter to, to support them. And that's why what we are saying, the situation on the ground in Syria, politically and security wise is very complicated and it's very polarized and politicized. What we are asking for now Put politics aside. Let's focus on people's needs. Let's try to mobilize resources to help them, to stand by them. And what we need is long-term commitment, not just now. We don't want people to turn their faces away after two weeks when the earthquake and its aftermath is not in the news. We need to help people on the long run as well. They feel so alone. They feel let down. And that's why the international community needs to step forward and support them. That's exactly what Martin Griffiths said. The people feel abandoned was his assessment as he's made these three days of visits to the quake zone. It was interesting, struck by his comments yesterday that from the U.N. perspective, uh, the moment would come soon to pivot from search and rescue to recovery. I'm wondering this morning, Ms. Amin, from the U.N. standpoint, has that moment arrived? Is all hope lost and is it now matter of recovery? You know, maybe in theory, people say after one week, it's hard to find survivors. But I think for the families who have relatives under the rubble, they are still hopeful and they are still trying, even when the official um, rescue and search teams have stopped. It's hard to tell people to stop hoping. Uh, we are, what we are hoping is that the world now remember pays it atten attention again to the suffering of the Syrian people for the past 12 years, and maybe even put more concerted effort to end this crisis, to allow them to go back to their homes, to stop being displaced and being so vulnerable. Part of why this earthquake was really shattering to their lives is that they were vulnerable anyway, even before it hit. And they're vulnerable because this country had been in crisis for 12 years. They lost their homes. Uh, many of the hospitals were destroyed. Many of the schools, deep economic crisis. The country was divided. It was so hard on them for the past 12 years. They paid the highest price. And now I think it's time to think, how can we really not just alleviate their suffering and mitigate it? How can we end it? Rula, thank you for another conversation. I appreciate it. Senior Communication Advisor with UNHCR. Good morning. Thanks.